All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to the studio. Thanks for watching. Super appreciate it. Uh, we took a little bit of a break last week um, after our holiday live streams. Uh, so um, thanks for coming back and, and, and following us. We really appreciate it. And congrats to the winners of the gifts. And um, make sure that if you got an email that you um, respond back to us. So there's a couple people that haven't. So um, anyway, we want to make sure you get your, your gifts um, if, you, if you won. So make sure you check your, your email box for that. And um, I just wanted to give a little shout out to my team. Thank you guys. We're, we're always working behind the scenes really hard um, to, to get everything right, um, or hopefully. Um, and I just want to say, hi, Mom. I know you're watching. Hi. <laughs> uh, we, I have been super busy in the studio in the last week or so. We've been uh, working really hard on the monthly pastel painting lessons online and also finishing up our new workshop, which I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. But I just wanted to share a couple things that I've been working on before I get into that, that kind of announcement thing. Um, you know, I'm always a little, kind of, a little bit reticent to share stuff that's sort of in progress. I feel like some of the stuff I'm going to show you today is a little, I'm not going to say half-baked, but I haven't really like gone full into it. But I still, I still love to share what I'm doing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I've been working on, for the monthly, chickens and ducks. So I've got these little little sketches, little thumbnail sketches. Maybe we should go over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bryce. And these are this is little um, hens and rooster. I love these little thumbnail sketches. And these guys, just having so much fun. Their shapes are so interesting. Such dynamic shapes. Their their movement. Um, all of that, their, their character, it's really fun. So uh, following up on that, I did some drawing. And it's been really interesting to get into doing some just drawing. So I've been doing these guys, just kind of characters. Really fun. Um, this one. So this is, uh, this is very mixed media. This is um, just on Bristol paper. It's a Sharpie um, pen and charcoal and acrylic paint. I think I used some India ink on here as well. So just really just playing around, really playing with the gesture. Love that. Let's see what else did I do? And then these guys, again, playing with the ink, some pencil line. And I just like the graphic quality of this, just really fun. And then this guy, this guy is, um, <laughs> you know, roosters, boy, they're, they have a lot of character. So this has a lot of mixed media in it as well. So really fun. And um, then the other thing that I've been working on, you guys know that I've been working on head drawing. And I intend to do a section on, in the monthly pastel painting lessons on portraits. And I'm really, you know, that's not my usual jam. Um, but so I'm kind of having to, to, to get with it a little bit. So um, the other day I came into the studio and was working on a, um, a portrait in pastel. And I really like how this one turned out. Um, it's got, thanks Bryce, it's got, um, I like the, the application of the pastel. The drawing's not, you know, there's a little, few things a little off, like her, this is not quite right. But just the direction of it I think is really, really interesting and really cool. Um, and I, there's a part of me that also likes that the drawing isn't totally 100% on. So, that that's uh, that's all coming along. I'm really enjoying um, just a a little shift away from the landscape, a, you know, just a little bit. And then in terms of um, 
just a study I came across. I, I have this um, Richard Schmid book, um, A la Prima, A la Prima Two. Now, if you're serious about painting, this is one of those books you ought to have, um, I just think. And I was I'm thinking about Color College a little bit. Um, on one of my online workshops, if you don't know, and um, he talks about color harmony in here, and one of the things that, I just wanted to read this little passage about color harmony. And he writes, therefore light produces harmony in a subject, and then in parentheses he writes, and don't forget it. Local colors illuminated under the same light source or combination of sources absorb and reflect the wavelengths of light they receive in direct proportion to the distribution of color radiating from the light source. Because of that, the colors of things in the visual field appear to mutually reinforce one another. This constitutes an order, a relationship, which unites colors and also, which is what I refer, therefore refer to as harmony. I think that's a really interesting perspective on color harmony, and color harmony, and I totally agree because I'm always talking about that light pervading a subject is that consistency of light. That's what that's what really um, makes something work as a unified whole. And he's saying attributing color harmony to that. And that's really, really, really interesting. OK, so that's that little stuff about what's going on in the studio. So now to my new exciting announcement. I'm really, really happy um, to announce today. We're releasing a new pastel workshop. And we haven't done an all pastel workshop in quite a while. It's been a, a long time. And so we're releasing Sunsets in Pastel. It's actually live on the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, right now. Um, so I just loved doing it. I think it's a really, um, it's, first of all, it's a really beautiful workshop. You know, Sunsets are both a beginning kind of and an ending. So I think it's a perfect time for us to engage in, in Sunsets, the beginning of the year. Um, the compositions in this workshop are pretty simple, so we can really focus in on, on color and mark making. I'm not saying it's an, a totally easy workshop, because it's not really that, because it's you know, um, getting a handle on how to orchestrate those bright, bold, vibrant colors is, you know, that's, um, there's, therein lies the challenge. But um, I think it's a really gratifying workshop. Um, so during the workshop, we kind of get to relax in and into and enjoy and contemplate those um, beautiful, awe-inspiring views of sunsets. So I want to also give a little shout out to my friend Roger from RogerThompsonPhotography.com. He contributed several of the photo references to this workshop, so um, they're really amazing. So um, anyway, we really get to grab our most vibrant pastels <laughs> and try them out, kind of poke into the far reaches of our palette that we sometimes maybe don't go to. So I think that it's um, really, really cool. You know, pastels give us that bold color right at our fingertips. It's so, um, it, it's so tactile and, and immediate. I think that it's, they're the perfect, perfect media for sunsets. Um, so I think this workshop will really give you that strong grasp of techniques that will make painting sunsets in pastel a real joy. I talk about gradations. I talk about um, knitting the, the clouds, um, the sky around the clouds. All that stuff is there. There's over seven hours of video. So seven paint-alongs also in this workshop and a 40-page PDF. And I wanted to keep it really, really affordable. So it's on sale for just $76. And that's, that's $50 off the regular price. And that's for just this first three weeks. 
Um, so again, it kind of makes it about $11 um, a project if you want to look at it that way. So I think it's really affordable. Now, now here's my little surprise for you monthly pastel painting lessons online uh, member subscribers. You automatically get $13 off when you check out. You have to be, so you're, you're getting extra off. So it's really a good, super good deal for you guys. Um, so, but you have to be logged in and you get that discount automatically, you monthly people when you check out. Okay, so that's um, for the first three weeks here. And um, this workshop will also have a dedicated Facebook group. That's something that we're a convention that we're, we're keeping on. And I know there's some people that don't know which group to post to. You can post to the monthly group. You can post the sunset stuff to the monthly group. You can also post to the public group. It's really up to you, but it is, um, uh, I think, really great to have a group for each of the workshops because you'll be working with people that are um, working on the same challenges, working on the same um, kind of goals and objectives. So I think it's really good. And everyone in those groups, are, I'm so um, uh, just heartwarmed by how everyone helps one another, is encouraging, supportive. Um, People chime in about materials and you know how how they're how they're setting up how, how what their progress is. So it's really amazing to see the community that we are building around the workshops. It's it's really really wonderful. So yeah, so I think this one's going to be really fun and relaxing. And um, I was really really happy to get back in and do another pastel all pastel workshop. Um, at this um, very beginning of the year. So that's that. And today, um, I, 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 the reason, I, I have to, a little confession, you guys. I know that there are so many of you that like to paint along, uh, but we, I couldn't post what exactly what I was going to paint this week because we really were right down to the wire whether we were going to be able to release the workshop today or not. So I wasn't really sure what I was going to paint. So um, I'm going to paint a sunset, a little simple sunset. Um, Bryce, you want to put the reference up for me today? OK. Um, yeah? Oh, great. Oh, oh cool. I, I don't see it. I'm like, oh, I've got too many cameras, too many places to look. OK, great. Um, so that's what I'm going to be painting. Um, and I just encourage you. I know if you if you're um, if you wanted to paint along, I mean you you could you could do it from the screen. But you know why don't you just sit back and relax and imagine that you're sitting there on the shore, watching the sunset and watching that beautiful sun go you know dip below the horizon, and that you can feel the feel the spray of the water and hear the waves going in and out and I just think that that's really really cool so um, I'm gonna paint this and uh, I'm gonna use a lot of what I learned through the course of doing the workshop to um, to 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 do this piece I have actually sitting here right on the floor here I have a couple of the projects so that I can look because you know my whole thing is if I've solved a problem, um, I'm going to try to use you know <laughs> what I've already learned to in my next piece. So I so I'm not all every time having to reinvent the wheel. So that's one real you know huge case for working in a series because you can you can kind of incrementally solve the problems and and also there it gets to be a thread that carries through each piece. So I think that that's really worthwhile. OK, so I'm going to get started today. Um, it should go, it's, you know, I think we'll have plenty of time. And we'll take a little break and talk some more about the workshop and answer some questions if you want. Um, let me get my hair out of the way so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So uh, Marla, we do um, yeah. have a comment from yeah. Allison. Uh -huh. 
Uh, she says, I take notes and snap screenshots after I put it all together and make my own pictorial paint along. I think that's a, that's a recipe for success right there. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. So take, take a um, screenshot. Is that what she does? Yeah, yeah she yeah. takes notes while she watches and then she paints later. Oh, I think that that's a really, really good idea. Yeah, taking notes so that, yeah, I think that's really good. Okay. All righty. And what kind yeah. of black artist tape do you use? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, there's a couple different um, uh, versions of the tape that I use, um, it de depending on what art supply store I get to. This one is just, it's called Pro Premium pH Neutral Masking. Um, this one, um, sometimes I just get black. It's called photo tape. But this one's got a, it's a little thinner and a little stickier. It works fine. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to try to try to stay out of the way here. And I'm going to give myself my little bounding box. Very simple composition, so it's really not about the composition so much. Okay, and I've got my little T square here because I want to get my horizon really nice and straight and perpendicular. And I'm thinking right about there. Maybe, maybe give it a little bit more. And just get that. Now, this edge can be soft, but I do want it straight. Okay. And then I think I'm just going to come in and give some indication of where these waves are sitting. And that's so, they're so fun. So Marla, here's a question mm -hmm. um, from Tavi. Um, okay. Can you explain how to handle the waves? Do we think just marks? Waves seem to be like geometric shapes. Um, I. So when the way I'm thinking of them, Tavi, is that they are um, just that they. There's shapes, and I'm using marks to, you know, to suggest those shapes. I don't think wave. Basically, anything that I'm painting, I don't think of the thing. Like, it's not a tree. It's not a, you know, anything. It's, to me, it's always a shape that has a particular value and a particular hue, and that's it. I don't. Yeah, geometric. I'm not really thinking that. Like in this case, especially, I'm thinking about the this gesture of them, and the intervals between these, more than anything else. I'm gonna get a little bit of this guy in the front. It's this so it's so so pretty. And then I'm gonna just give myself a little sort of uh, tick mark here for where I want that sun to be, um, and just some kind of indication. I think that's about where I want it to be. Now now comes the tricky part because I have to decide on some kind of value and hue for the, the, the main wash of the sky. And um, keeping in mind that I want this, the sun, um, the sun here to be, it's the whitest white that I've got, I think. So if I think, okay, that's gonna be that, then, um, where where is the rest of the sky in relationship to that? Okay, I can look right here, and you can see it's quite a bit darker for sure, and it's a lot different in in the hue, obviously. 
And then also right here at the horizon, it's kind of a darker orange, a little bit brighter. Over here, it has a little bit of gray in it. I like that. So keep that in mind. So I want to pick what seems like that, that just kind of average that out. Um, so here's a question from Vin. Um, mm -hmm. Can you name three, if you were to name three artists or important people that made influence, to have influenced your art, who would they be? Top three. It's a tough question. Yeah, it is. Um, well, Andrew Loomis. Um, boy, top three. Um, I'm going to say, um, this is kind of, you know, out of the blue a little bit, but Thomas Hart Benton. And, um, and then I guess I have to give a shout out to um, Richard McKinley. Um, just because, you know, when I first started doing pastels, he was, you know, front of mind in terms of, you know, what I, what I wanted to, um, to do. Okay, let me see. Yeah, this isn't exactly what I want. I'm, let me try this one. Oh, maybe I'm going to come in here like this. Start out. I've kind of decided I've got to do a few things in here. Mm. This is a little softer. Just getting something in. And I'm kind of getting it in kind of thin because it seems right to me. And then I'll get a kind of gradation. And I'm, I, this line that I put here, I'm not worried about covering it up. I can always go back in and restate it. Right there, right there at the horizon, there's this sort of soft kind of grade thing that I, I want to really try to get. I'm not sure. It might be something like that. Here's another one, uh, another question for you, Marla. Um, Labcat would like to know, uh, can you talk about your decision to pick dark paper and building up the lights in the sky as opposed to starting with a light paper and darkening the water? Um, yeah, um, obviously you, what's really cool about pastels is that you can go either way, right? You can, you could, you could do it either, you could approach it either way. Um, some of it is just an, um, an aesthetic choice on, on my part that, um, I like the way the pastel, it sets up there on, when, when you put it down on dark paper, it like, pops and it's to me just like kind of as you're painting it's kind of fun to see that happening um so uh part of it is that for me just like oh it's fun to see it go down like that um because because you can do it either way And James would like to know, uh, what's the best way to blend and when? Okay, so as you can, so far, I haven't put, I haven't used my finger or anything to blend. And I do use my finger, but I do it quite selectively, right? I'm, I'm going to be careful about not overdoing that. Um, when you blend with your finger, you're... Um, so pastels, the little fragments, the little facets of the pastel are um, sitting up there on the paper. And that's what makes them so vibrant. The light is actually physically like hitting.
hitting those little facets, making the, the, the actual piece kind of vibrate. And if you press with your finger um, too much, you're, you're mechanically um, diminishing that effect. And you don't, I don't want to do that. Um, so um, I'm going to be really uh, um, thoughtful and, and careful not to overblend with my finger. So I'm going to wait to do it until I really know that I want to do it, if that makes sense. Uh, most of the blending that I'm doing is pressing one pastel into another um, more than, um, you know, I'm not using my finger very much. So that's kind of the start of, I, I think that's not too bad for the sky, just a start. And I probably will use my finger a little bit on this when I finally get to it. Over here, I want something softer and prettier than what I've got. Let's see what I've it's such a pretty color. So here's a comment from Bev. She says, I love the drawing. I love the drawing in mixed media pieces. We need a mixed media course. <laughs> another another workshop. We're got we've got all kinds of ideas. We I wanted I would love to do a mixed media course because it's to me it's um it would be great. And kind of bouncing off what you were talking about, um, pastels, the way that they behave on the paper and stuff, um, Sonia wants to know, does workable fixative crush the effect light has on the pastels? Well, workable fixative is, yeah, I'm not ever going to use a workable fixative. I'm always going to use a, a fine art finish fixative. Because um, a workable fixative, um, and here's the thing. You know, I just I actually had a, a question this week from a student. See, that doesn't look like very much yet because we don't have anything to, to counter it. Um, I had a question this week or recently from a student about fixative and she's like, Oh, I watched your video and I did it exactly like you said and you know, and um, it still didn't you know, still didn't work right. What am I doing wrong? And um, I think you know, whenever you're talking about fixative, it's tricky. And I also think it, it, it's very, very dependent on what pastels you're using and what, um, what paper you're using. So it's not just the fix. It's all, it's all of that. It's all of the factors. And that's what's so hard about it. So now I'm getting in here and I'm really getting that bright, that corona of the sun. That's so neat. So yeah, fixing is a, is a thing. And, and there's no doubt that no matter how careful you are, um, it's going to change it. Um, it just is. And that's, you know, that's a drag. But um, but also just kind of knowing that going in, like it, you know, if you're gonna fix it, it's gonna it's gonna change. All right, I want to look at some of these other fun colors. It might be fun to get. I might be fun to do this. Oh yeah. We have 781 people watching right Whoa, now. Whoa, yay. <laughs> that's great. And I didn't even, that's so funny because sometimes I never know where people are tuning in because they're really interested in the, the particular reference. But this time I didn't say, so that's funny. And Patricia would like to know the name of the fine art fixative you use. 
Um, I use I use Krylon Fine Art Fixative. At least right now, I that's what I'm you know using. As I'm you know always looking for something um, better or different or I want. Also, Jean would like to know if you use non-glare glass. No, I don't use non-glare glass. The reason non-glare glass has to be um, right on the surface of the art. You could, if you didn't use a mat or you didn't use any kind of spacer, you could put the glass right on the art. But that's the only way um, non-glare glass works is if it's like you know right on the surface of the art. So if you're using a spacer or a mat, it doesn't really work. So that's the, that's the caveat with non-glare. All right, I'm just putting some marks to see if that's going to do what I want it to do, and I think it will, so I'm going to leave that behind for now. Now I'm just going to come up with some mark making. And some colors. That's the thing. There's almost no color that isn't in here. <laughs> Everything's on here. So it's almost like you could, you could do anything. Put anything in here. So Kim would, Kim would like to know what glass you do use. So I use, I don't use um, um, museum glass unless my client, my, you know, the painting sold and my client wants it because it just, you know, just, just so, it's really beautiful, but it's just so expensive. So I'm, I use, a, um, there's lots of different levels of glass out there. Um, you know, I, I couldn't tell you exactly the, the one that I usually go for. But um, I don't use museum glass um, typically. And just to clarify, you don't do your own framing? I don't do my own framing. Yeah. Not anymore. I used to. I used to do it. But um, it's so time consuming and it's it's really a pain with um, pastels. And Jen wants to know if it's true a fixative changes the color of the pastels. Yeah, it does. It changes, um, it's going to change the value. It, it, it really is. There's just no two ways about it. But to some degree, it's, it's going to. In, in what way? It's going to change the value. It's going to make them darker or lighter? Make them darker, usually, yeah. Yeah, definitely make them darker. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm just coming up with some texture and a series of marks that are um, implying what's what I see out there. And uh, just to let everybody know, at the end of the piece, we'll uh, show all the sticks that Marla used, and we'll put yeah. the mat on there and all that stuff. Yeah, we will. I'm not there yet, though, guys. It's got I got some I got some work to do here, but I think it'll it'll be neat when it gets done. And you can always watch watch it later. If this isn't like Instagram Live, it doesn't go away, so it'll be up there on YouTube. And Susan wants to know, uh, does the fixative really help protect the pastel artwork or just slow down the deterioration of it, de deterioration of it? It does um, keep the, um, if you're, you know, I, I like a mat, so it does um, keep it from, my, my framer is like, he's like, he can tell, he's like, oh, did you, did you spray these? He could tell if I haven't. And... He really um, thinks that it really helps um, the pastels from getting damaged. 
Oh, that's neat. Ooh. That's really cool. Okay. Nice little setup there. Am I staying out of the way, Kevin? Oh, you're doing a <laughs> decent job. I mean, <laughs> you, you can always do better. I know, I'm not. It's just, thanks. <laughs> I know. We do our best, you know. That's all you can ask. We're always working on it, trying to, to get things. The one thing about me standing here, you guys, I, I know that's not a good thing. It's not a good look for you. But there, <laughs> there are times when I, I, I'm just not going to get the same result unless I stand right um, directly in front. And it isn't what, what I'm doing right now. You, that, you guys maybe don't see it, but it's very, very unnatural for me to stand to the side. It's not... Um, it, it, it's not how you really want to paint. So, and, and Catherine, actually, this is um, Catherine asked a question uh, about. Um, you know, I got to find it again. Sorry. Um, do paint do pastel paintings fade over time? Um, no, pastels don't fade over time. Um, they're very archival compared to um, many other media. Um, that the, the, the thing that goes on with them, um, because they're pure pigment and a binder, and if you're using um, good paper, good archival paper, they should be just as vibrant, you know, 100 years from now. The thing that went on for a lot of the, like, um, the, the impressionists that many of them that used um, pastels is that they were painting on surfaces, substrates that are now degrading and falling apart. So it's not the pastels, it's the papers that they were using. So when you see a pastel in a museum that's under, you know, low lights and they're all, you know, worried about the um, archival, it's that. It's not the pastels. It's the paper. So they're, they're very, very archival. It's just cool. Oh, that's really fun. So the and waves, you know, you can think about what the wave is doing, how it's breaking, how it's cresting, um, you know, that that kind of thing. I am thinking about that. What do waves do? So here's a good question. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not supposed to say that. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no. Yeah, uh, I was like, no heaven. There's, there's all. All the questions are good. <laughs> but when I say that, typically when when it's a question that I, I kind of also have, I think. That's, oh, that's oh, good. oh! I see. Okay. But, um, all right. Mary noticed that you're working from top to bottom. She says, "Why is she working top to bottom when she usually works all over?" Oh. Oh, just. That's just the way it goes today. I don't have any rules. I don't have any, you know, set way. It just seem, it just see, feels like it, it, it's natural to me in this case. I mean, I could, I, I could have done it. I could have done it anyway. Um, I, I think it sort of made sense for me today to get the sky in first just because I 
like I said, I know that that is the lightest spot, and then I'm going to want that to be white, and that I'm keen off of the I'm keen off of the sky. So I think that that's what sort of um, drove that decision today. I'm all anytime I'm painting, I'm always. I always approach it, what's the easiest way for me to see it and do it? And so sometimes sometimes that, that is to work the whole thing. Sometimes it's to, um, you know, to, to work top to bottom. I don't, there, there's no right or wrong, at least in my mind, there's no right or wrong there. Tim would like to know, has Marla ever painted upside down, meaning the reference photo upside down. Yeah, you know, that's one way of, of if you if you feel like you're getting like super stuck and like can't get the drawing right, going upside down is one way to you know, it, it takes the representational um, uh, mode um, out and so that you can see it, you can really begin to see it just as those shapes that are a particular size and a particular color. So definitely w one of those kind of can trick your brain. Or if you hurt your back and you got an inversion table, you can <laughs> keep on painting. Yeah. All right, let me get, I, I think now I would like to kind of get some more because I, I need to go a little faster. Get a little bit more of this in. I think yet. And Jean just noticed that people are um, putting money in the super chat. That's an option for people um, to donate money for the live streams. Yeah, yes, um, yeah, it is. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Also, make sure you go and check out the website because that's where all the real action is. We have um, third. How many? I think twelve or thirteen um, workshops now, in all different mediums and. Sheila would like you to explain what keying off means. So um, keying off, I'm just referring, it's not, it's not a really, you know, nothing fancy or technical. Um, basically, I'm saying I'm putting down something. You gotta, so you gotta start somewhere, right? You start, you put a color down that's a, you know, you put something down and it's a certain value. So once I start there, then, then the next thing that I put down is from there. So um, no matter where, where you're starting, you got to go to the next thing, right? So that, that's all that is. It's not, you know, anything. I'm just going to get, get this in a little more quickly now. I'm thinking of that. You know how how that water is moving and cresting and flowing and and I want a little something a little warmer over here. And R. Griswold would like to know, um, have you tried the new Lux archival paper? Yes, I have tried the new Lux archival paper. I like it. It's really a great alternative. Um, there's, it's very similar in a lot of ways, I think, to the Wallace. Um, so that's neat. Um, yeah, I like it. I'll be using that.
there's all these color. I see all these colors in here, and there's so it's you you can't really make a mistake because there's so many. Getting a little bit more playful. So down in here, this is really, in the photo, it's really this really intense color. Maybe even more, it may be even more like this. It's really, that is fun. Woo that is super fun. This is the kind of foam right here in the front. Ooh, I love that. Just thinking about the gesture, what's happening. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay, so then this stuff is a kind of, what is that? And I don't want it to be just that. I want it to be. You can just feel the waves. Uh, Kelly would like to know if you've painted this picture before. No, I haven't. <laughs> I hope it looks like I did. <laughs> no. And I'm not, you know, that's the thing with me. I'm not, I'm not um, shy about sharing if it doesn't work, you know. Sometimes it doesn't. And R. Rafferty would like to know um, which paper mat board eats up the least of your sticks? Ooh. Why, why do you want to know that? Um, in parentheses, it says for beginners. Maybe they don't want to use up all their sticks. Oh. Um, that's a really tough question because it depends on how you're approaching the painting. Um, like, I, I la actually, last night I did a little unboxing video that I, I haven't released yet. Uh, on using some Blick pastels um, because I, I do want to be able to offer people that are just starting out, like what are some ways to like get into it without, you know, the, you know an enormous investment and still get some good results because it's, it's a toughie because you, um, it's, a, it's kind of a conundrum because, you know, it, it um, you may not know that whether you even really want to, you know, spend, um, in, invest both time and money in pastels, right? It can be really confusing. And if you don't use good materials, you're not going to get as good a result and therefore be frustrated and, um, and maybe not want to stick with it. You know, you know what I'm saying. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's tricky. So same thing with the paper. I was using the Blick pastels and inexpensive Canson paper. And the pastels just uh, like literally just dust off 
that paper, then you can say something about, um, say, pastel mat, that it really um, grabs onto the sticks in a particular manner and uh, uses up a lot of pastel. So I don't, I don't know, it's, I think that that's a tricky thing. Um, So in one sense, uh, a canton eats it up more than a pastel than a, a sanded paper, is what I'm saying. So right now there is a big a lot of chatter about paper and, and okay. on the on the chat, and it's great that yeah everyone's chiming in with their opinions. It's, it's yeah, awesome. good, good. Um, there was a question; it kind of got lost in the shuffle or just kind of a comment, it would be interesting to see you do the same reference photo um, with two different types of paper and see yeah, what yeah, yeah. different approach would be. We'll put that in the stack. Well, that's always, you know, a, a thing, I think, to like try, try it differently. Okay, now I'm not done with this with the water, but I, at this point I want to go back and um, pick up some of what I want to do in the um, in the sky. Um, I think I want to get this a little bit more, and then I'll do that. I want this shape to be bigger. Big color, big, big color. All right. A little bit of finger blending, not much. See, I'm just using, just playing with the edges. I'm not rub, 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 rubbing to get it to blend. I'm not doing that. It's, it's a little bit, little bit different. Okay, now I want to come in here. Get a little bit of that warm light to kind of pervade that that whole section, and um, also feeling like this is a little dense. I'm gonna open this up a little bit. That's better. And then just soften up some of this. Simplify a little bit here and there. Okay, now I need to wash my hands off because I'm going to go ahead and get that work on the sky a little bit and kind of hopefully pull it together a little bit. <laughs> and as I'm doing that, I'm seeing other things I want to do. So let's see. How much time? Oh, I'm doing pretty good on time. So yeah, we um, the sunsets workshop. It's really um, super fun to do. And as I said, we haven't done a, a all pastel workshop in a while, so that was um, really nice to do. Let me get to that sky back up here. Um, okay. I'm going to come. Yeah, so I'm going to really now 
hit that white, and I have to press pretty hard, cause, but that's okay. But, but that's as far as I know I need to go to get it. So not, not a problem. And if I hadn't planned for it, then it would be a different matter. Get this even a little hotter. I have a even brighter orange. Here we get that. That's fun. Get that to really sing. Same thing here. Now I want to result right here. I'm I'm feeling like this isn't quite right in the foreground, but kind of get back to it. And I'm I'm just bringing another. Uh, stick a pastel along, kind of filling in a little bit of the texture. Not all of it, though, because I want some of it, because uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to fill the, all of the texture in. So Sheila has a question. Mm -hmm. um, Marla, is orange the hottest color, or is it red? Hottest. Um. I mean the warmest or um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Warmest. Warmest. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, when I'm w dealing with color, I'm not so much a warm and a cool person as I am a um, val you know, keen on the values. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess the, the, the reds and the oranges are, they're pretty, pretty warm. It's all relative. To me, you know, the color, it isn't so much, it's, 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 um, is it warm in relationship to the other thing that you're putting down? Like, you, you can't really say the color is um, warmer just on its, you know, on its own. Oh, and she was talking about contextually, um, she said you, at one point you wanted to get that area a little hotter. Oh. So that was, that was why oh, she asked oh. the question. Um, there's limitations yeah, to the chat, yeah. you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's that's uh, interesting. Yeah. And I know I'm not supposed to say that again. I apologize. <laughs> I keep on messing it's up. It's okay. No one I question just, is better than another. Yeah, that's what we yeah, there aren't any there aren't any uninteresting questions or questions that we won't answer or try to answer. I mean, just from my perspective, this is a good example of uh, what you're talking about. The contrast between the blue water and the, and the bright sun is just, it's in relation to each other. It is like a really, really yeah. stark contrast. Yeah. The whole, the whole uh, sunset w uh, workshop is like that. Yeah. Each one is really intense. Yeah, this one's pretty intense. This might be... Yeah. It's fun though. I mean, these are super fun to paint because, well, for one thing, in terms of the color, like I said, you can't really make a mistake. They're all the look, all the color that's in here. There's no, there's no wrong thing in here. Um, I 
this one a little bit different. And I'm just, you know, kind of coming up with, you know, a series of marks that sort of makes sense to me. And can kind of connect up some of the shapes. Getting lots of compliments, and we appreciate that. Oh, uh, yeah. It's amazing. It's vibrant. It is. It is pretty vibrant. It's pretty wild. Yeah, it's a. It's a bright one. And like you discussed in the beginning, you did not take this photo. I did not take this photo, um, and actually Roger did not take this photo either. This, I, I think this is from a student that um, I'm, I think, I'll have to double check. Sorry, Roger. <laughs> but many of the photos that we used in the workshop, Roger took. And Marianne wants to know if you have any hints on how to handle the sticks to keep everything a bit cleaner when painting. Um. So I think that um, um, one thing is to, to, I keep a little wet rag so that I um, can wipe my hands off kind of as I go. That's helpful to me. Um, the other thing that I make a habit of um, is that I, um, when I'm done with a piece, when I put everything back in my palette, I wipe them off so that, um, you know, I don't end up with just, you know, gray uh, out here, which is pretty easy to have happen. Um, um, I'm, I guess I'm kind of neat when I'm painting. I guess I am. Um, you know, I, I've had lots of students that are, you know, somewhere in between. Um, and then some really messy students. Um, you know, I, I one thing I do think about keeping stuff tidy a little bit is that usually however your stuff looks, like my 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 stuff is not is kind of loose and tight in, in, in a certain way, um, I think. Um, I, I, I think my, my paintings sort of reflect the level of messiness, <laughs> the end product of the painting. Um, so, uh, you know, that's something to think about. Ursula has a um, comment slash question here. I think what I'm seeing you do, Marla, is optical mixing. Am I understanding that right? Yeah, there's definitely optical mixing because I'm putting strokes side by side and they're they're you know vibrating. And that's what the impressionists were you know like so huge for um, the optical mixing. But I'm also blending you know a little bit with my fingers too, Ursula, so that you know there's some of that going on. But yeah, that. That putting one stroke next to another um, is is you know blending it visually.
So now I'm just kind of coming in and doing a little bit of blending in the sky. I think that's nice. Want. There's just one kind of thing I want to have happen. A little bit more. I think this needs to warm up a little bit. Should we take a look at it, what it looks like with the mat? I think maybe. Ooh, I just put a mark on there that I like. I always love when that happens, when you put something down, like, oh, yeah, that, that worked, that helped. And Maria sends you a real heartfelt thank you from Brazil. Oh, oh, that's so nice. Well, you're most welcome. I'm just, I'm thankful for everyone that watches and follows me and checks out the website and all that. Really, really grateful. My whole team, we're, we're really happy. And we're really happy that we get to do something every week that brings, um, I, I hope, you know, happiness, joy, all of that to people. I mean, what a great thing we get to do for a living. It's amazing. I think it looks pretty neat, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I like that. I mean, there's all kinds of other stuff I could do, but let's let's um, let's get the mat out, Kevin. Okay. Get that. I think it's in that bottom drawer, right there. Oops. Oh yuck. Okay. Now my mom's gonna complain because it's dirty, <laughs> mom. No, I haven't gotten a new mat. The thing is, uh, you know, I don't go out to the art supply store very often anymore. I usually just order stuff on line these days. So, mat board is one of those things that it's a little harder to come by. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna mess it up. Oh, look, I messed it up. Okay, I'm being all awkward with this. Oh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. Can you lower your left hand a little bit? I will. Hang on. There, oh, sorry. I'm getting there. Oh, yeah, it turned out. You know, it's funny. Um, some days you feel like, you can paint, and other days you feel like you can't. <laughs> hey, can we take a look I at your sticks it. as well? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. move the camera. So this will be for sale on Daily Paint Works in an hour or so. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show. Oh. Kevin, can you wait just a second? Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, I am um, preparing for the... Um, Sunset Workshop, I did a bunch of these little minis. I'll also post these on Daily Paintworks as well. And I, I think they're, they're pretty cool too. And some of these, um, what I really like about a couple of these is they have the Terry Ludwig irid iridescence in them. So they're really, they're sparkly. Yeah, a lot of these are really sparkly. And um, so they're really fun. So I'll post these as well. So, yeah, they're 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 really kind of kind of fun. This is this is from one of the previous workshops, but um, yeah. But 
lots of practice. So, you know, that's 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 what gets you there. Lots of practice. And should we sh should we show the ones from the from the workshop? Yeah, why should not? We should we do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have them sitting here. So, um, so at one point someone asked me, "Have you painted? Have I?" Um, what? You want to just hold them up? Yeah, yeah. Have I painted um, this scene before? No, I've never painted from the, this reference. But these, this is from the workshop. Um, this is one of the projects. This one, and then this, this one. These are from Roger Photos. Ooh, so yeah, that's a little bit bigger. Um, and there's, there, you know, obviously there's, there's a similarity there. Um, so by the time I get up here to this one, I, I have a really good idea, a real strong idea of how to approach it. And that's just so awesome to me to like really have that, um, uh, that experience in, oops, now I'm really making a mess of all my stuff. Um, you know, that's, to me, like I said, I solved the problem over here. And so when I get up here, like, I kind of have a, you know, a fairly decent idea of how to approach it. And that's, um, yeah, that's what I'm hoping I can pass on to you guys in the workshops and also the monthly lessons. We tackle a lot of different subject matter in the monthly lessons. And, you know, I'm not an expert at, you know, still life and portraits and, and you know, chickens and ducks and all that. But I think that I have, I can give you a, a kind of a roadmap how to move forward with a, you know, a nice wide variety of subjects. And I, and I get that from my um, years as an illustrator and just, you know, having paint, painted a lot. So, um, yeah. So that's all good. Can um, we take a look at those sticks? Yeah. Real quick, I have it. Oh, uh, my gosh. The sticks... Um, are kind of crazy because they're such a variety of hues, and um, just yeah, you know, just use that yeah, pointer. Just yeah, you know, we got we got a lot of lot of stuff going on here. Lots of lots of variety, um, but um, mostly in these kind of blues and purples. But then <laughs> look at the oranges. Uh, lots of lots of that. I this is a Terry Ludwig eggplant. These, those were the only real, real dark darks I used, the, the blue spruce and the Terry Ludwig eggplant. Um, popped in a little bit of this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So some of these are kind of uh, purples or, uh, you know, a little bit muted colors, um, little, little grayed. And you need that to contrast with the really bright, saturated color. So, okay. All right. I guess that's about it. We um, will be coming um, back, I think, next week with another live stream. So make sure you go over to paintinglessonswithmarla.com and check out the, the new Sunset Workshop. There's um, also going to be a commercial. I'm not sure if it's posted yet gives you a really good idea of what it's all about. And so will the website. And um, so check it out. And it, I think that you'll really enjoy it. It's all 100% pastel and um, kind of fun to do that. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. We really so appreciate it. And uh, we will see you next week. All right, bye-bye.